Would you like a clutter-free home? <laughs> I absolutely would love to have a clutter-free home all the time, but you know, I do occupy my house with two other people who have things and don't have the exact same thought and mindset as I do. However, if you found this video, you may be one of those people that maybe you have a cluttered house or you have some things, you just don't know where to start. I wanna to talk to you guys today. I found an article called 17 Things to Stop Buying If You Want a Clutter-Free Home. I thought this would be a good idea to go through the list and maybe it'll give us some ideas of things, thoughts, and uh, maybe we can give uh, the other people in our house a little, you know, a little boost, a little thought. Hey, maybe we should get rid of this. So let's see if we can find some ideas here. If you enjoy videos all about decluttering, simplifying your life, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. So this article that I'm reading, these ideas from, I got off of msn.com and it's written by Mary Aline Laponzi, I think. I will have the article linked down below for you to check it out. I will not be reading all of the articles, so definitely click on it and see what else it has to say. The article starts off with her saying, with seven people in my house, controlling clutter is a constant struggle. No matter how many boxes I haul away to the local thrift store, it feels like we always have an overabundance of items spilling out of cabinets, closets, and shelves. Yes, it's like decluttering is just not a, uh, it's it's not a one-time thing unless everybody in the house is is like a strict minimalist. Things just still get into their, into their house. They have legs, they walk in. It happens even to me, and I'm sure it happens to a lot of these, you know, really high profile minimalist bloggers do. I bet it does. She says the key to having a decluttered house I've discovered is not getting rid of what we have. Instead, it's stopping the constant flow of items coming in through your door. So it's like having a checkpoint maybe. While anything has a potential to become a clutter, think twice about buying the following items, which can quickly overrun your home. The first one, single use appliances. I don't like these. What you will find is most people who are frugal or minimalist or living a simple life like items that are multi-purpose. She talks about you know rice cookers, panini presses, yogurt makers. Is there such a thing as a yogurt maker? I've never heard of that. That's interesting. I don't eat yogurt, my family does, but not that I would need a yogurt maker. It says, unless you're cooking these foods on a daily basis or weekly basis, skip the single use appliances. Yeah, if you like rice every day, all day, you probably get some great use out of a rice cooker. The same thing with, um, I, for the longest time, even one of these videos I made a long time ago said something, I'm not getting my air fryer. An air fryer has been come one of my favorite things because we literally use it all the time and it saves us from using the oven. But again, it depends on you and the things that you like to eat. A panini press, you know, you know, I don't run around eating a whole bunch of paninis. I certainly don't eat yogurt. I would love to see what a yogurt maker is. I need to Google that after this video. The second one she talks about unitasker gadgets. Unitasker. I think that's fun. I never knew that was a word. Unitasker? Is it really a word? Maybe not. It says unitasker are just as bad as single use appliances, except they don't take up as much space. Uh, here we're talking about the egg slicers, the hamburger molds, the apple cores. Um, <laughs> These things, like the, the grape cutter things or the, the, the um, strawberry pulls out the middle part. You know what? You can use a paring knife. Yeah, and you can use it to slice up your meat too. I mean, <laughs> those things just don't make any sense. And why do you need an egg slicer? Do you really need an egg slicer? You can't just cut the egg. Okay, it, it saves you 0.2 seconds. No, books. I've never met a library book sale I didn't like. Me too or a used bookstore. Ooh, that's so much fun. Anyway, everyone who walks into my living room can tell why I like reading. While reading is an essential part of life, it's not, it's hard to have a clutter-free home with books everywhere. My daughter loves books. I'm gonna, I, I love that she loves books, but we have so many books that there's just books on top of books. And we go to the library and, and um, borrow books. Like we go, we go every, gosh, probably every couple, three weeks, and we get a stack of books this high because she just loves books. And uh, hey, I'm grateful for that. We've kind of had her grow up. There's not a night that we don't go by reading two, three, maybe four books to her. Um, but there's still, we go buy books, and I don't mind that. I'd rather buy books than toys, but the books are beginning to overrun everything. So she's one that likes to hold on to her things, so sometimes I sneak some of those books out and give them away to like the used bookstores and stuff. The next one I can definitely relate to, toys with many parts. Yeah, 
don't buy don't buy the kids toys with lots of stuff right <laughs> says i'm all for getting toys that they want and will use but don't introduce them to the world of legos unless they've expressed an interest now i don't know about a problem with that so with me i don't mind the building things because yeah there's a lot of parts to them but that is something that they can imagine now the one thing i don't necessarily care for is so so let's just use the example like the lego the little lego kits that build the little lego scene why not just get them a big box of lego so they can build whatever they want those things i can definitely see go to waste because you can't remember how to put it back together though this part goes over here you don't have that part to go here you know rather than you know just using your imagination and building whatever whatever it is that you want to one thing that i love that my daughter loves she calls them stick blocks i don't know why but it says magnformer it's not the actual um magnaform brand but it's the mag the magnet tile those things are amazing and can can you know entertain her for a long time and have you seen this thing called a marble run <laughs> she got one for christmas now this thing goes is is a lot of pieces but luckily it has a great bag for it and but it's this 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 plastic tube thing that you make all these fun uh it almost reminds me like of a of a hamster path or a hamster what do you call it, maze but that your marble goes in that thing is awesome fun for everybody with us and toys we like to get something for our daughter that we are going to have fun with so we get card games or board games or books or that marble run or those those magnaform or something that we can play with her with it rather than she believe it or not i was so into barbies she doesn't care she loves watching Barbie on uh, TV, but she could care less about Barbie. I had Barbie everything. So I think it just depends on, on you and your kid. I could go off on a tangent on toys. We're, we're in the middle of toys at the age of five. Yeah. The next one is holiday and seasonal decor. Now, this one gets me. There are many people that love to decorate, and I, I do not care. But the one holiday that I walk into a store and I'm like, Ooh, I don't know about you. Maybe it's the colors that really just I love, the pinks and the purples, but Valentine's Day. Now, I don't have a single Valentine's decoration in my house, oddly, but that is the stuff that if I were a person who buy, who would buy holiday or seasonal decor, would go bananas over. It's Maybe it's the white with the pinks with the red and the hearts and the, you know, maybe that's what it is that I love about it. What kind of decor do you like? What season decor do you walk in and go, oh, is it spring? Is it Easter? Is it Christmas? Is it Halloween? What's your favorite? Put it down in the comments below. This is decorating for the holidays can be done, but then you need to store everything away. <laughs> so funny. I see these things about people, you know, that decorate all this stuff. And it's so much fun when you put it in, but you know what? I think ahead. I think ahead to taking that crap down and putting it away and mm, no. This is a great tip in this article. It says if you can't bear the thought of, you know, removing that clutter and the seasonal decor, limit yourself to decorating for one specific holiday, the one that you love. So if, if I only had one, so we really only decorate for Christmas. That's it. And that's mainly for my daughter. But maybe, you know, when my daughter's off to college or, or you know, out of the house as an adult, maybe I will embrace that Valentine's commercial holiday <laughs> because I love the pink. Next one is holiday specific gift wrap. For a clutter-free house, you should also banish rolls of wrapping paper for every occasion. Instead, pick one paper that will work for everything. I love this idea, and I think that I'm going to embrace this going forward with uh, holiday wrap and with, um, uh, what do you call it, gift bags. It says, for instance, Money Talk News Managing Editor Carla Bauscher buys only silver paper. It's festive enough for Christmas, but also works for everything from birthdays to bridal showers. That's so, so true. The next one is wall decor. We don't often think of walls as a source of clutter, but if you fill them with signs, artworks, and photos, your room will be cramped rather than airy. Be choosy about what you display. Think twice before you buy one more affirmation sign that encourages you, <laughs> encourages you to live, laugh, love. <laughs> this one gets me. And those, you may have one of those signs and you may love it. Welcome, home, home sweet home, kiss me before bed. I don't know. I, there is not a lot on my walls. And you may not think, you may think that that's just not homey. To me, I don't need things on my walls that clutter up and then I have to dust. It, it's not. The things that are on my walls are bigger pictures of like my family. Like my big wedding picture, a big daughter, a big picture of my daughter at two. You know, like a 11 by 14. 
Um, I've got a set of the three of us, uh, three pictures from a photo shoot when she turned two, um, like larger ones that look really good. I don't, I don't care for wall art. It's especially when you get like the, the six pictures of the family members and the long distance aunt and this one kid in that picture, can't remember whose kid that is. And then you've got the arrow that says pointing towards whatever. And then you've got the live, laugh, love. And then you've got the clock in the middle, like the collage. It's too much for my brain to handle. Subscription boxes. Again, I'm not reading all these, so check it out down below, but subscription boxes. I did this. I did the makeup subscription boxes. There was a time about six years ago when I was so into makeup. I don't wear it anymore. I don't wear it. Uh, I wear like mascara, eyebrows. I wear eyebrows. I fill in my eyebrows, my 90s overplucked eyebrows, and mascara and lipstick. But like face makeup, I had palette after palette after I was watching every YouTuber about makeup and I still couldn't do it right. Look terrible. Point being, I got some of those like, what was it, Ipsy and you know what I'm talking about, like where you get the random skincare products that are this big or, or <clears throat> sample makeup and maybe one or two, you got lucky if three of the items actually worked out for you. But since I discovered the world of subscri subscription boxes about two years ago and was instantly hooked, a lot of people get, get like that FabFitFun box. Here's the thing. I would rather take that money and buy something I know I want rather than get a subscription box. Yeah, you may get, you get like all these things at a deal because they compile it, but how many times do you actually love everything that's in there? Do you get, get use out of enough product from that box every month to justify the price? If you do, great, fantastic, fabulous. If you don't, maybe rethink it. Decorative pillows. Mm -hmm. A couch or bed piled high with throw pillows can look inviting, but will where will all of those pillows go when it's time to sit down or go to sleep? Yep. They're going to end up on the floor. If you have kids, don't be surprised that they end up all over the house. <laughs> that is funny because we have um, our couches. There's four pillows for the whole like living room set. And they don't, they're not in the way. They just came with everything. And my daughter uses those pillows to build forts, to build traps, <laughs> to build mile high whatevers. Those are her favorite things to play with, the decorative pillows. I don't even put the decorative, you know, the, the sham, the pillow that comes, the pillowcases that come as the decorative ones for your bedding. I don't put those on my bed. I don't put anything that is going to end up on the floor. If you, it isn't useful for me to lay my head on or to rest my back against, it's not going on my couch. I see a, there's a lot of YouTubers especially that have, and yeah, it looks good. All the pillows, they have the big pillow, next pillow, little texture, and they mix up all the textures and then they change everything and then they get the Valentine's Day pillow and then they get the Christmas pillow and then they get the Easter pillow. Where are you so storing all of these pillows? I'm hoping that you've got one of those vacuum seal bags. That way you can, you know, squish them down to this because otherwise storing pillows takes up so much useless room. This is another one that gets me, especially Valentine's Day themed of this. <laughs> Stationary. This is going to get you too. And this goes to journals too. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's me back in like, I, I was born in the early 80s. So the 90s. Do you remember Lisa Frank? If you do, put it down below. Oh my gosh, I had the tape and the journals and the pens and the pencils and the little, uh, I still love that stuff. I found some Lisa Frank uh, stickers at the dollar store and I got them for my daughter. They were secretly for me. But there's just something about stationery. I don't know what it is, but this is, this, this is the ultimate aspirational purchase for me personally. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I'm with you. I buy notebooks, cards, and stationary sets and dream wistfully about sitting down to write long letters or journal my deep thoughts while contemplating the rising sun on a summer morning. <laughs> Don't you? I do too. You know, the sparkles or the journals that have uh, the plastic with the with the squishy stuff inside with the with the glitter. Mm. Is that you? That's me. It says, of course that never happens and all that paper products simply overflow on my desk and cause guilt every time I see them. Unless you are already a committed user of stationary products, this might be one purchase to skip. I'm going to end it on the last one, which she ended it on the last one. I, this is one of my favorite thoughts. Organizational bins and baskets. People go and buy all this 
organizational stuff. They go to the container store, Ikea, and get all this organizational, organizational stuff, right? Make everything look pretty. And it's because they see, again, all these YouTubers or people on Pinterest or on Instagram that have this, you know, the, the refrigerator with all the acrylic baskets that have, you know, the yogurt pouches all in a row and the juice boxes all perfectly right here. You know what? Be careful when you open my fridge because you don't know what's going to bounce out at you. That's how unorganized that place is because I just don't have time and I certainly do not care to go buy things to take up more room to organize them. This says, in an ironic twist, the organizational bins and baskets you buy to contain your clutter could actually make your house look untidy. Mm -hmm. uh, unless they can be tucked away out of sight, they actually can create visual clutter in the home. Plus, they can quickly become overloaded and look disorganized. So this is my favorite line. If you take anything away from this video, take this. Rather than buying containers for your clutter, consider getting rid of the clutter itself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you have not yet, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.